Okay, sorry for having to cut that last video short. Uh, so just to briefly wrap up Act 2, uh, Manfred, having his big badass moment, uh, has crashed their meeting. He bosses them around, says, call up a start. They do it. One thing that's interesting is that a start, when she's there and in her ghost form, refuses to say, I love you, I miss you, I forgive you. Um, it's kind of up to you as a reader. I don't know if it's like there's some kind of an interference thing, like, Dorothy, Dorothy, I can't hear you. Um, or if she is just mad and is like giving him the silent treatment despite him begging her to talk because she is upset still. So that's kind of up to you. I tend to think she's mad <laughs> for about whatever happened, but she does at least deign to say, Manfred, tomorrow ends thine earthly ills. Meaning after tomorrow, you're not gonna have to worry about this anyway, you're gonna be dead. And then weirdly, he just takes that and runs with it and says, okay, and pieces out. Starting in act three, in scene one, we get the introduction of the Abbott character. And it is usually like, I don't know, like the Byronic heroes are usually very like anti-religion and anti-God and like, you know, just outright goth Satanists a lot of the time. Um, it's interesting because Byron's approach to religion was sort of like, it's not for me, but I respect it and in some level do believe in it. And he actually talked about this a lot with his ex-wife and he, he wasn't an atheist. He did believe in God, I think just a very particular version of it. Um, and really kind of struggled with it and like to talk about it and think about all those kind of deep issues. Uh, so the abbot is really an agent for good here. Uh, he is not coming in like, you're going to go to hell. Like he's not berating him. He's like, I'm here because I'm trying to help you. He's like, I've been hearing rumors from the townspeople that you've been cavorting with all of these really hardcore spirits that nobody should be talking to. And I'm just, I'm worried about you and I just want you to be okay. And then Manfred is like, I shall not choose a mortal to be my mediator. Have I sinned against your ordinances? Prove and punish. And the abbot says, my son, I did not speak of punishment, but penitence and pardon. Uh, which it's <laughs> kills me because it's like, Manfred's like, punish me then. And the abbot is like, literally no one mentioned the word punishment. Let's back off of that, please. Can we not go down that pathway? <laughs> it was slightly masochistic. Um, but they have their talk and the abbot is, is really trying his best. And even at the end of the scene, he's like, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to give up on this guy. Uh, this should have been a noble creature. This is line 160. He hath all the energy which would have made a goodly frame of glorious elements had they been wisely mingled. As it is, it is an awful chaos, light and darkness and mind and dust and passions and pure thoughts mixed and contending without end or order, all dormant or destructive. He will perish and yet he must not. I will try once more for such are worth redemption. And my duty is to dare all things for a righteous end. And, you know, he still sees, he says basically Manfred is like, a, what could have been a really good cocktail, but the mix of all the ingredients is really off. Like a dirty martini with way too much olive juice and not enough vermouth and no blue cheese in the olives. That's sad. Um, that's what Manfred is to him. He's like, if the ingredients in this man had been mixed differently, this would have been a, an absolute champion of a human being. But he is a disaster. And that's a referendum... Byron's referendum on himself. I think he actually said that about himself at one point. He was like, I'm such a, like, I feel, he says, I feel like I have some good features and some good possibilities within me, but that they were mixed in the wrong way. Um, but the abbot is trying and the abbot is pure and sweet and must be protected at all costs. Uh, we talked about already the scene with the servants discussing what happened with the start. Um, he, in scene four, he gets this big kind of goodbye to the world moment basically which is kind of a call back to in some ways Hamlet's speech to Horatio where he says uh there is providence in the fall of a sparrow the readiness is all and he's basically saying I'm it, I know that my death is approaching I'm ready for it um that is Manfred's uh scene four moment he is basically rather than saying goodbye to any one person he says goodbye to the sun uh you know glorious orb and then or sorry, that was scene three. I, I didn't say that I could do math or that I could even pronounce basic numbers. You're here to learn English for me. I apologize. Uh, but scene four is when the abbot comes back and he's still trying to talk to him. And then really 
really spoopy stuff starts to happen. Uh, unfortunately, since, you know, they don't have extensive stage directions and we don't get to see this made into a movie, we don't exactly get to see what this super demon looks like. Uh, but Manfred says, look there, what dost thou see? Abbott, nothing. Look there, I say, instead, fastly. Now tell me what thou seest. And then clearly he's come out of the floor or whatever. The abbot says, that which should shake me, but I fear it not. I see a dusk, an awful figure rise like an infernal god from out the earth, his face wrapped in a mantle, and his form robed as with angry clouds. He stands between thyself and me, but I do fear him not. Um, and then the spirit just starts kind of trash-talking Manfred back and forth and is just trying to drag him to hell, as we talked about before. Uh, spirit, come. Abbot, what art thou, unknown being? Answer, speak. Spirit, the genius of this mortal, come, tis time. I am prepared for all things, says Manfred, but deny the power which summons me. Who sent thee here? Thou'lt know anon. Come, come. I have commanded things of an essence greater far than thine, and striven with thy masters. Get thee hence. Manfred, even dying... <laughs> You know, his, as for, like, why Manfred dies, by the way, that's also kind of a mystery. I've sort of read it that, like, your body only has so many, so much energy forces and that he has expended the, the life forces of his body by cavorting with these spiritual beings. And he just, he only just has so much life left in his canister. Um, they used to call it etheric forces. Uh, but yeah, even dying, he's like, you know, I, I've messed with people far greater than you. I don't know who the hell you are. What's your name? Why are you in my house? You know, he, he can't not be sassy. It is physically impossible for him to not sass. Uh, mortal, thine hour is come. Away, I say. I know and knew my hour is come, but not to render up my soul to such as thee. Away, I'll die as I have lived, alone. I ain't gonna go with you. I, <laughs> I've been living my whole life the heroic outcast, and I'm gonna die that way too. Um, if you have looked on the uh, Edmodo at all. I thought that Travis's thoughts on the last lines were really, really well said. Um, and Manfred says, I do defy ye. This is line around line 100. I do defy ye, and though I feel my soul is ebbing from me, yet I do defy ye, nor will I hence. While I have earthly breath to breathe my scorn upon ye, earthly strength to wrestle, though with spirits, what ye take shall be taken limb by limb. Um... And he says, Thou false friend, thou liest. My life is in its last hour, that I know, nor would redeem a moment of that hour. I do not combat against death, but thee and thy surrounding angels. My past power was purchased by no compact with thy crew, but by superior science, penance, daring, and length of watching, strength of mind, and skill, and knowledge in our fathers. When the earth saw men and spirits walking side by side and gave ye no supremacy, I stand upon my strength. I do defy, deny, spurn back, and scorn ye. And he says all that to say, you know, I don't owe you anything. All the knowledge that I have gotten over these past few years, I didn't make any contact with the devil. I didn't sell my soul. I learned this. And basically, I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps, and I worked for this stuff. Um, he says, I have no problem with dying. I've made peace with that. But I'm not going to go wherever it is that you're taking me. And it's implied that in this battle of wills that's going on, that Manfred does somehow win it. We don't know where he goes, but it is implied that he did not go with that demon. He did not go to whatever hell that was that they were trying to drag him to because he's just built different. He just was basically just talked the guy into submission. Um, and this is the kind of the big famous line. Um, you know, the spirit says, but, 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 but thy many crimes have made thee. But like, but, but you're real bad. Uh, and Manfred says, what are they to such as thee? Most crimes must be punished but by other crimes and greater criminals. Back to thy hell. Thou hast no power upon me, that I feel. Thou never shalt possess me, that I know. What I have done is done. I bear within a torture which could nothing gain from thine. The mind which is immortal makes itself requital for its own good or evil thoughts. Is its own origin of ill and in and its own place and time. Its innate sense, when stripped of this immortality, derives no color from the fleeting things without, but is absorbed in sufferance or in joy, born from the knowledge of its own desert. This is kind of like in Paradise Lost, one of the famous quotes from Satan, uh, he says, the mind itself uh, is its own thing and can make a hell of heaven or a hell of a heaven of hell. Uh, that's basically what Manfred is saying here. Um, thou didst not tempt me. Thou couldst not tempt me. I have not been thy dupe, nor am thy prey, but was my own destroyer and will be my own hereafter. And, and that's pretty badass. Um, you know, I, I got here on my own for good or ill, and I'm going to die on my own for good or ill. Uh, in the last little moments with the abbot, it's actually really sweet. 
Uh, Manfred says, "'Tis over, my dull eyes can fix thee not, but all things swim around me, and the earth heaves as it were beneath me. Fare thee well, give me thy hand." Which is really sweet because his whole life he has gone without wanting or being interested in fellow human contact, with the exception of a start, which you could argue was so similar to him that it was like just another version of himself. And here in this last possible moment, he seeks out that human contact and says, give me your hand. Um, just as he's dying, realizes that, that there might actually be some other human beings that are worth his time and that the abbot is one of them. And it's the biggest compliment that somebody like Manfred could ever give to seek out that contract. contact. If you know any melancholics in real life, it can be really, really hard for them to open up to people ever or to let them in. And he is the same. Uh, and then he says, old man, tis not so difficult to die. And a lot of you have talked about that on the discussion about him basically saying, hey, compared to everything else I've been through, dying is a piece of cake. This is not a problem. Uh, and one kind of last cocky line before he goes. Uh, he's gone. His soul hath taken its earthless flight. Whither I dread to think, but he is gone. Uh, and so Manfred, you could talk for days about Manfred. And again, you probably like, why did we have to read this? I, I don't know what your thoughts were on it. Um, generally people enjoy it in like a corny way. Um, like you would watching an episode of General Hospital because he is just so dramatic. Uh, but the reason we read it was because it fictionally in the fictional world contains the genesis of this Byronic hero character that now just pervades every type of media that there is. And now whenever you encounter Byronic characters, you're going to be able to think of Lord Byron and you're going to be able to think of Manfred and, and kind of contextualize it with its origin. And you will know this is where this started. I have read the play. I know who Manfred is. Um, also magic. Who doesn't want to read about magic powers? So I do. Anyway, thank you for reading. Those of you who did, really appreciate it. Thank you for your contributions to the discussion posts. Um, what I'm going to be posting uh, tomorrow, I'm probably, I'm planning on posting these Manford videos tonight after everybody finishes their quiz. And tomorrow at some point I will post, or maybe Wednesday, tomorrow or Wednesday, we'll see what happens with my dog. Um, he has kind of cough. Tomorrow or Wednesday, I will post some materials and some videos about William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge, because those are the next two romantic poets that we are going to cover. I was going to have you do for next week, like kind of an artistic discussion post. And the vibe that I'm getting from a lot of you is that you're just still incredibly overwhelmed that your classes are different levels of difficult depending on like how that online format is working out. And I just, I didn't, I'm not going to do that basically. I don't want to give you something extra complicated uh, if it doesn't really truly serve the curriculum. So I, I am going to cut that and just give you a much easier uh, discussion prompt to do for the following week. Uh, anytime that we do poetry and it's just a poem, there will not be a quiz. So that's good. Um, so for the coming week, you will not have any kind of quiz. You just need to watch the videos that I do and look through the PowerPoint so that you're prepared for the test that's eventually coming up. Uh, so thank you for your attention. I really appreciate your time. I know that it's valuable and I'm grateful that you signed up for this class. I wish I could have taught it in person because there's a lot of fun activities that I usually do uh, with these poets. But um, And it's always fun to act this stuff out because it's it's so uh, theatrical and, and passionate. But um, I hope that you all are having a fantastic start to your week and that everything is going well for you. And thank you for listening. If you need me for anything at all, don't ever be afraid to ask. Reach out to me on Edmodo or reach out to me on RaiderNet or on Snapchat, Mad Max Fury Road. So see you later and have a nice evening.